Hello and welcome to Iskaria.com. My name is Dr. Heather Ali. With Iskaria.com, you can enjoy medical lectures anywhere and anytime. Today, I'm going to talk about abdominal pain management. This is a continuation of my previous lecture in which I talk about, I taught you about the red flags, about the pain management in a patient's coming to emergency how to approach a patient and how to identify red flags and what to do first. In this lecture, there's a more detail about how to examine and what to do and how to approach a patient who is mildly stable. So this is an outline of our lecture, which includes all these slides. So first we will talk about some differentiating points, some examination findings on examination that can help you find a diagnosis that can make you a concern that can make a concerning diagnosis or at least a list of diagnoses. What are the associated symptoms that can present with abdominal pain? There's several of them that will be explained in, in details in the subsequent slide in the similar slides. Systemic causes of abdominal pain, for example, ketoacidosis, hyperthyroidism, muscle spasm, abdominal wall hematomas, there are multiple things that can present with abdominal pain. The systemic causes can present with abdominal pain. We'll talk about physical examination, how the patient can present and what makes you think this patient is critically ill and this patient needs emergency and uh, concentration. What to look first, how to check on the vitals and what to interpret from the diagnosis from the from your vitals and how to make uh, the patient vitally stable. Again, in emergency, you don't have to make the diagnosis. It's good to make a diagnosis, but first you have to make the patient hemodynamically stable. We'll talk about in detail how to, do a, how to do a physical examination in a patient with abdominal pain. What are the steps, what to look for? What are the steps in this slide, as you can see, what are the steps in inspection? What would you see on inspection and what they can bring and what can they can tell you about the underlying diseases? We'll talk about some steps in palpation, some signs on palpation, for example, guarding, how important this guarding is and what are the underlying cause, causes that can elicit guarding and how can you differentiate between a true guarding and a false guarding. Pelvic signs, signs of vaginal discharge, signs of ad adnexal tenderness, groin inspection for any testicular torsion, for any emergency conditions, rectal prostate for any impaction of stool, what to look for in this and this and how to examine and what to look for are the details in the slides. Next, some important differential diagnosis, how the patient present in, in emergencies, what, when you can suspect these diagnoses and what to do, how to treat this patient in emergency and what should be the patient disposition after treating an emergency. Next, diagnostic testing, what to look for, what what investigations sh can show you any show you uh, more more things about the diagnosis. What are the specific investigations for the diagnosis? If you are thinking you are su suspecting something, what are the clinical features that can help you make a diagnosis that does not need any laboratory investigations? Lab investigations from simple lab investigations from radiological studies. Moving on. General treatment principles, what to do first, what to, what to be given, pain management, antibiotics, empirical antibiotics, and NG tube, what to look for, how to treat life-threatening conditions, that should be taught under general principles, treatment principles. Special patients, which includes elderly, what are the risk factors in elderly, how to approach in a patient with elderly, what to look for, what's the effective diagnosis or lab, lab investigations or radiological investigations should be done in patients with, uh, with advanced age. 
again, disposition. As I t- mentioned before, disposition is a very, very important part of ED. Who needs surgical consultation? Who needs to serial evaluation? And who needs discharge? And at what moment and what, on what things the patient should be discharged? Some pearls and pitfalls and myths. What to do, how, what not to do. Our main points would be considered under this, under this section. How to approach, not, do not restrict yourself to certain limit. How to make a diagnosis without radiological studies and what to do if you have a diagnosis, even if you don't have a radiological studies. What to consider in a patient, even if you don't, ha- if you don't have an alternative or pertinent diagnosis. They should be considered the pearls and pitfalls. With Iscaria.com, you can enjoy thousands of lectures, courses about medical, basic medical sciences, advanced medical sciences, clinical sciences, emergency medicine, and much more with Iscaria.com. And it's a good news. You can start your free trial today. Thank you for watching Iscaria.com.